and welcome to we're doing a question from Leetcode code called invert binary tree it's an easy we're going to jump right into it given the root of a binary tree invert the tree and return its root example one we have four two seven one three six nine so our final output is the root four with the left child being seven then two nine six three one so everything's just reverse left to right and example two we have two one three and our output would be two three one and if we're given nothing in the root our output is also nothing like always we're going to start off with some examples if we have nothing in our root of course our output like we saw in example three would be nothing if we have just one node say we have just node two our output would be just node two now what if we had three nodes we had two four and five our output would be switching the left and the right so instead of two four five we would switch it to be two five and then four and if this was part of a bigger tree say we had one two three four, five, six, seven. Well, we know what to do with three nodes by themselves, right? We take the left and right and we invert it. So two, four, five here would become two, five, four. And the same thing would apply for three, six, seven, right? Three, six, seven goes from six, seven to seven, six. We're switching the left and the right. And now that these sub problems are complete, if we look at the tree as a whole, this is our root node. This entire thing can be considered our left node. And this could be considered our right. We just want to take those and switch them. So 254 becomes the right child of 1, and 376 becomes a left subtree of 1. So our final output would be 1, 3, 2, 7, 6, 5, 4. Basically, everything is just being inverted. And we do all these repeat operations, assuming left and right nodes for some root, all the way through our tree. And since we're doing a lot of repeat operations all the way through, we're going to be solving this using recursion. So let's go ahead and code this up and then run through an example. Okay, to code this up, we're going to need two things, our base case and our recursive case. So for our base case, when do we stop? Well, if root is none, there's really nothing to process. And we saw this again in example three, we would just return. So if root is none, we just return. If it's not none, then we want to take our left and right nodes and assign it to our right and left nodes respectively. And we're going to be doing this for every single node in our tree. So this is going to be our recursive call. So we're going to set root.right to be self.invert of root.left. And same thing with left. So root.right and root.left are going to equal self.invert tree of root.left and self.invert tree of root.right respectively. And in the end, since we're assigning values to our right and left, we need to return our root. So we're going to return root. So let's go ahead and submit this and it is accepted. Now, before leaving, let's just run through an example to see exactly how this recursive call stack is being built. For example, say we have an input root node of four. This is similar to example one where we have four, two, seven, one, three, six, nine, except we just don't have this left child of six over here. Otherwise, it's the same tree. So we pass in our root, which is four, and we're just going to go line by line to see exactly what we're doing. The first thing we do is check if root is none. It's not true, so we don't return. Now we want to assign root.right and root.left to be self.invert tree of root.left and self.invert tree of root.right. So we're going to solve for this first. What is root.left? Our current root is four, and we're calling this with self.invert tree of our left child, which is two. So we're assigning root.right to be self.invert tree with our left node, which is two. So we're going back in this function and calling invert tree with root being two. Again, root is not none. So we're going to be making this call again. And before we can assign our left node, we need to assign our right. So we process this first again. So now we're calling this with root two. And what is root.left? Root.left is one. And we're going to assign whatever that output is to our two's right node. So we go back in this function and now we're going to call this with root one. So we make a check root is not none. So we do the same thing again. Now we're going to set root.right to self.invert tree of root.left. Now one doesn't have a left child, so we're going to be passing in none. So we go back into this function with invert tree and now root is none. So all we do is return. So we're going to return to our caller and we're going to assign root.right to be none. Now that root.right is none, we can solve for root.left. So root.left is going to equal self.invert tree of root.right. So one's left child is now going to equal self.invert tree of what we get from its right child. Again, right here is none. So we're going to pass that in. And now we need to calculate this over here. So going back into this function with root being none, we go in here and root is none. So we do return and we return to our caller. So now this is just going to be none which means root.left is none and root.right is none. 
So we've finished this assignment and now we return root. So our root is one and it has its left and right inverted. Of course, both here were none. So they're just gonna say none, but now we return one to its caller, which was two. So since we're returning one to its caller, we're basically saying root.right is now going to equal one since this is what we're returning over here. So now we assign root.right to be one and now we're going to assign root.left. So root.left is going to equal self.invert tree of root.right, which is three. So we're passing in three over here. So calling this again with three, we're gonna assign root.right to be self.invert tree of its left child, which is none, and root.left to be self.invert tree of its right child, which is also none. And we know that's just going to return none. So to save some steps, so let's just return none right now. So root.right and root.left are both none for root three. And we finished these assignments and now we're gonna return the root of three. So we're returning three to its caller, which means self.invert tree of three is just three with its child nodes switched. So we're gonna assign that to be root.left. So now for two, root.right is one and root.left is three. So we're gonna reassign these values over here. This is now three and this is now one. And now we've completed the left and right assignment for two. And now we can return two to its caller. So we're gonna return two to self.invert tree of two. And we're returning two with its left and right children swapped. So we're returning this over here and we're assigning root.right to be two, which means four's right is now this node over here and all of its children. And now we want to figure out what root.left is for four. So root.left for four is going to be self.invert tree of root dot right. So we're assigning the left to be what we have in right right now, which is seven. And we make the same calls again. We're going back into our recursive call stack. Now we're gonna call it with root being seven. So calling this with seven, root is not none, so we don't return. And we change the right and left nodes for seven, which means seven's right is now going to equal self dot invert tree of its left, which is none. And seven's left is going to equal self dot invert tree of seven's right, which is nine. Now this is the first statement, so we're gonna process this first. And we call this again with none, which means we know we're just gonna return. So root.right is going to be none. And now for root.left, we're gonna call this again with self.invert tree with root being nine. So with nine, we're not none, and we're gonna change our right and left to be left and right. So again, here we know both children are none, so right and left are both gonna be none. And in the end, we return root nine to our color, which means root.left is now going to equal node nine. So seven's left is now nine and seven's right is none, which means we're done processing seven and we return seven to its caller. So we return seven over here with all of its children modified. Now what this means is that for root four, its left child and subtree is going to start with node seven and its right child and subtree is going to start with node two. We're switching the left and right. Now that we've made that switch, we're gonna have four, seven, two, nine, three, one and we return root. So we're gonna return the root of four with all of the nodes inverted. And if we wanna make a check, we have four, then seven, then two, then nine, and our input didn't have six, so we're not gonna have this over here, and then three, one. We went ahead and inverted the entire tree. And we did this by breaking it down into a sub problem and working our way up from there. Now time and space complexity for time, we're going through every single node in our binary tree. So there are n nodes, our time complexity is gonna be O of n. In our space, our recursive call stack could be as big as the number of nodes in our tree. So that's also going to be O of n. But we just went ahead and solved invert binary tree. If you have any questions whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.